Oh, hi there. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday morning, our daily devotions together here with Pastor Sutton on Wednesday, May 11th. 11th, two ones, one one, five one, one two, oh two, oh, no, no, there's not another oh, two, but May 11th, 2022. Glad you're here with us for me to be a little goofy today. Um, gray. That would just be how I would describe this day here in Wisconsin. Um, oppressive, perhaps. I haven't actually been outside yet. Bonnie has taken Zan to school, and she said um, that it's the air is heavy. Um, and a, a notice just popped up on the on the phones from uh, AccuWeather Weather saying expect severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail. We're supposed to be tornado watch half the half the day yesterday, mid afternoon into the evening. Nothing, nothing came of it. But the front that would form the tornadoes was um, was to the <clears throat> to the east of us um, by quite a bit, actually, um, all along the. Different story along the, the uh, east coast of Wisconsin, along the Mich Lake Michigan there. Um, yeah, Qu Clintonville had storms. <laughs> Bonnie watches uh, the weather out of, on her phone, watches uh, the weather out of out of Green Bay. She, when we lived here before and lived in Clintonville, Pete Potoniak, the weather guy there in um, at WLUK in Green Bay, the Fox station, um, was always a mild amusement to her. And she's been watching. He does a dad joke every morning, which is which is fun for me. I, I enjoy that part, so I get to hear that when she's watching it. Um, today, today, I don't know if that was supposed to be his dad joke or it just was, but um, a, a, a guy mailed in and said that uh, the the storms that came through had taken 25% of his of his roof, so now all he had was an oof R roof. 25 percent oof but never mind let those who have ears hear it's a dad joke what do you expect well good morning let's see who's here with us this morning on this beautiful wednesday morning uh well let's just stick with wednesday morning uh neil and geraldine good morning jerry good morning glad you're here with us uh, Brenda, good morning. 75 and headed to 86 in Kalamazoo. Yuck. Um, I don't remember. Well, I guess, yeah, you're closer to Indiana there, and that's... The thumb was never quite that bad. I mean, there were days, but typically this time of year you didn't have it. But Kalamazoo is further south. Michael, good morning from Goat Acres. <laughs> Glenn, good morning. Connie, good morning to you and Robin. Coffee and juice on the porches. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Leela, good morning. Verna, hello there. Mushtaq, good evening. Deb and Ann and Grant. Oh, Grant's off on another project. Okay, well, good morning to all of you. Renee, good morning. I just And then there's Bonnie popping in. Yeah, she says 66, and I think we're headed for a high in the 70s. It's actually, it's actually like 72 in the house or something like that. Um, I flipped the I flipped the heating system from heat to air. I think it's time. It's not warm enough yet for it to kick in, but I have a feeling the way the day is going that the humidity is going to catch up. And <laughs> yeah, and then next week we'll have to turn the furnace back on again. No, I think we'll just turn it off and just let let it be what it is. So anyway, good morning. I'm on the wrong page here. If uh, if you are following along in a service book, a Lutheran service book, the hymnal of the Missouri Synod, you'd find us on page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. That's where we like to begin here. And so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. 
Amen. Glenn, did I not say good morning to you? You were up above there, and I see you're back down here again. Good morning to you, my friend. Uh, you know, I haven't figured out yet if what I've got going is still my cold or if I'm just into allergy stuff. Anyway, our psalm today, Psalm 19, verses 7 through 14, Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Kathy, good morning. Glad you're glad you're joining us here. I forgot to click my likes here as I was saying hi to everybody. Well, we'll come back to that. Obviously, the psalm is focused on the statutes of God, the law of the Lord. And it's it's perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. <laughs> Our faith is not a complicated thing. God has, God has given it to us from the beginning in simple ways. <clears throat> Even as we're reading through the Old Testament, what God asks of the people is not complicated. Simply to put their trust in him and not in themselves. What's complicated is the old wicked foe, the old nature that's in us, and it doesn't like that. <clears throat> and the Israelites did not have the advantage of the testimony of the Holy Spirit inside of them. They only had the witness of God and his prophets. That's why the prophets had to be there to speak God's word to the people, whether it was Moses or Aaron, whether it was uh, Elijah or Elisha, Nathan, uh, Samuel, uh, the others, Job. Not, well, yeah, Job. Um, Job wasn't necessarily a prophet, but Job, um, who was I thinking of? Jonah, Jonah, um, Amos, uh, you know, throughout, even the, even the minor prophets, minor because there's less written about them, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, um, the major prophets of whom there's much written. Um, and their job was to declare that law, the law of the Lord God, his word, his statute, his His, his precepts, um, his commandments. And here, in verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. <clears throat> the, the, the followers of God in, in the New Testament era were known as the enlightened ones, those who had received the light of Christ. Uh, uh, the light shines forth in them, right? Christ is the light that comes into the world. John, John's gospel spends a lot of time, well, in his letters, spend a lot of time on phos, or uh, the, the light of, of that comes into the world. Um, enlightening. And, and enlightenment was wisdom, right? Um, not man's wisdom, but the wisdom of God, right? Uh, the fear of the Lord is clean. It endures forever, it's true. It's righteous. Um, more to be desired than gold, sweeter than honey. And in it, we are warned. In it, we are told what God wants of us. We are not saved by the keeping of that law. Although Israel, see, that's kind of the, the pivot here. <clears throat> Israel was to keep the commands of God as he gave them. Um in righteousness. Now, 
it's 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 kind of a difficult thing to handle at times, right? We live by faith and not by sight. We're saved by Christ's death and resurrection, um, and not by the things that we do. Um, and, and it's faith that speaks those things to us. But for Israel, they did not yet have the Christ, although God knew the, the day was coming, and he passed over the former sins until the day that, that Christ comes, um, and, and he could issue that forgiveness throughout all time, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Um, but in their day, the Israelites were to keep the law of God. It, it, it wasn't the keeping that gave them God's grace. They didn't earn it by keeping it. It was the trust in God to keep his side of the bargain when they did their part. You see what I'm saying? Um, the, the act, uh, just as the act of eating the apple is not the sin, the sin is questioning and then acting on the question, um, did God really say? And, and eating the fruit of the garden. So also the salvific work for Israel is not the offering of the sacrifices, but rather the, the, the belief, trust, faith that God made them a promise that he would guard them and keep them. And as a result of that promise, they keep the law. Now you and I, as a result of what Christ has done, keep the law. Um, and when we fail to do so, we we don't have sacrifices to make because Christ has made the sacrifice for us. It's kind of complicated. And yet, it's perfect, it's reviving, it's enduring, it's pure. It causes us to rejoice in the heart. It's... Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be righteous in your sight, O God. Our, our rock and our redeemer. Let's look at Leviticus here, 16. Leviticus chapter 16. So we jump from chapter 10 to chapter 16. <clears throat> I guess that's appropriate. We're going to talk about the Day of Atonement today. So Leviticus 16, 1 through 24. Yeah, we better, we better cut some stuff here. I feel it building. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they drew near before the Lord and died. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come in or come at not hmm, tell Aaron your brother not to come at any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat that is on the ark, so that he may not die. For I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. But in this way, Aaron shall come into the holy place. With a bull from the herd for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering, he shall put on the holy linen coat, and shall have the linen undergarment on his body. And he shall tie the linen sash around his waist, and wear the linen turban. <clears throat> These are the holy garments. He shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. And he shall take from the congregation of the people of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself and make atonement for himself and for his house. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for Azazel. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and use it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azazel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness to Azazel. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall kill the bull as a sin offering for himself. 
And he shall take a censer full of coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, and two handfuls of sweet incense beaten small, and he shall bring it inside the veil, and put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is over the testimony, so that he does not die. And he shall take some of the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat on the east side. And in the in front of the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring its blood inside the veil and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, sprinkling it over the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. <clears throat> Thus he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the people of Israel and because of their transgressions, all their sins. And so he shall do for the tent of meeting, which dwells with them in the midst of their uncleanness. No one may be in the tent of meeting from the time he enters to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out and has made atonement for himself and for his house and for all the assembly of Israel. Then he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. And he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and consecrate it from the uncleanness of the people of Israel. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall present the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel and all their transgressions, all their sins. And he shall put them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in readiness. The goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote area, and he shall let the goat go free in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall come into the tent of meeting and shall take off the linen garments that he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall bathe his body in water in a holy place and put on garments and come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Day of Atonement. Um, once a year, once a year, um, the Israelites were to have this ceremony um, in which their sins were atoned for for the whole nation. Um, this is not private confession and absolution. Um, in fact, this isn't absolution at all. This is atonement, a payment made for the sin. Um, and there's a, unlike his sons who just wandered in before the Lord with incense and were destroyed for it, God gives very specific instruction to Moses to give to Aaron on how to come before the Lord. How to prepare himself, how to make himself ready to come before the Lord so that uh, he would be uh, ceremonially clean. And so that he would not be bearing the iniquities of Israel on himself or his own iniquities, right? God is holy, and he cannot abide having that which is unclean or unholy in his presence. And so a bull and a, and a ram, and et cetera, et cetera, sin offering and, and uh, burnt offering, uh, washing with water, um, putting on the holy garments that have been made for just this purpose. Um, this is what he's to do. Uh, and then two goats, two goats. One, to cast lots on them, right? Random chance, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, which, whichever one. Um, one of them will be a sin offering. It will be bled out and, and presented to the Lord as a sin offering. 
The other one is to be kept alive. And so after all of the atonement is made to prepare the altars, um, Aaron's to bring that goat before him. <clears throat> this goat is known as the scapegoat. Now, this is, this is where the term scapegoat comes from. Um, the one who takes the blame of the others. And so Aaron is to place his hands on the goat. Uh, is it specifically on the head of the goat? Uh, well, it matters. It really doesn't matter. Um, yeah, lay both his, both his hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities, all the sin, all the transgressions of Israel um, are laid on this goat. This goat now bears the sin of Israel. It is the sin bearer, the scapegoat. Um, but it's not put to death, not not there anyway. Um, he's to turn that goat over then to a man who's standing ready to take that goat out into the wilderness. Um, and there's talk of Azazel here. Azazel is another name for the devil, um, or it's one of his minions. It doesn't matter. Let's let's just keep it as the old wicked foe, um, the father of lies, the owner of sin, right? And so the sins of Israel are returned to him from whom they came, right? Ult ultimately, ultimately, sin is the work of the devil, not the work of of uh, God. It's alien to to uh, to God, and so the the sin is taken off the people of Israel placed upon the goat, and then the goat is sent out into the wilderness. The wilderness is always understood in the Hebrew mind, the Eastern mind, as a place of the dwelling of sin and the devil and evil and darkness. Um, um, when Jesus is tempted, he goes out into the wilderness, out into the desert, out into the, the, the places where there is nobody, and there the devil tempts him, right? So the devil waits there. Oh, wait a minute now. Is there a connection there? Is there a connection between the scapegoat that Aaron sends out into the wilderness carrying the sins of the people and Jesus, uh, after being baptized, now bearing the sins of us, the, the sin of all the baptized washed off of us and on to Jesus goes out into the wilderness and encounters temptation, encounters the devil. Yeah, there's a connection there. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, right? Our sins are laid on Christ. Um, what we see in all the laws that God gave, ceremonial laws that God gave for the temple, is a foreshadowing of what will come in Christ Jesus, right? Um, the blood of all the beasts cannot atone for but one person's sin, but the blood of Christ atones for all sin. So our sin is placed in baptism upon Christ. He takes our sins out into the wilderness. Um, and then encountering the devil, instead of succumbing to his temptations, because although he's born in our likeness, he's not born in the likeness of fallen Adam, but rather of perfect Adam, the likeness of God the way we were supposed to be before the, the what we lost in the fall, I should say. Um, and so he, he is, he is, un, he is able to stand up to the devil temptation without being tempted, um, responding to each one of those temptations with the word of God. The scapegoat goes out into the wilderness to its death. Right? It will be set upon by the wild animals out there and be and be be killed, whether it's lions or wolves or what have you. Christ goes out and he's attacked by the devil. Surviving it, he comes back to us, but the devil leaves him for a more to come to him again at a more appropriate time or a more uh, a, a better time for him, which is at the cross, right? The devil's there at the cross. He sees Christ being crucified and he thinks the victory's his. He thinks he's won, but that's the 
that's the biting of Christ's heel, the seed of the woman's heel, and it's the crushing of the serpent's head. Once a year, the Israelites would put out their atonement, would hold the ceremony of, of atonement for their sins. Um, you and I, we awake daily in the mercies of God, new each day through Christ. Un unlimited grace and forgiveness that's new each day to us by his work on the cross. It's our faith that sustains us in that, but it is Christ who does the work. The commandment here is faith, but what saves is not the faith, but Christ. Without Christ, there can be no faith. Without faith, there can be no receipt of what Christ gives. And so the two work together. It's the same with the law. The keeping of the law atones for the sins of the people, but that atonement cannot be received without the trust that God will do these things. And I speak about these things in a way that is human to our intellect and active in the way it sounds, like we're doing something, but it's it's passive. It's a, For us, it's a faith that's given to us and now seeks uh, this blessing that we have. It is not our faith that actively, it's not us active in our faith doing these things, but Christ active in us by his Holy Spirit that causes the faith to do these things. It's passive. It's something we've been given. Right? What must I be, what must I do to be saved is the, is the question. And believe in the, uh, Jesus himself says, believe in the Son of Man, the Son of God, uh, and by believing in him have eternal life. Um, but that believing is given to us in the waters of our baptism in the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, which by the way, is not the logos, which is Christ himself, but is the Ramah, which is the preached word, the spoken word, the read word. Faith comes by hearing that word. Hearing is a passive act. Yes, you can do active hearing, but hearing in itself is a passive act. Faith is a passive, pass, a gift we've been given that responds passively to what Christ gives. The goat takes away the sin of the Israelites. The Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world, of you and I. This is the great gift we've been given. And this is not atonement only, but absolution, because Jesus, after his resurrection, comes back, and in John 20, says, it says, He breathed on them and said, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you bind the sins of any, they are bound. That's the absolution. It's the, the keys, uh, the office of the keys, the authority of, of the apostles and of the church, of pastors, to speak Christ's forgiveness into our ears. It's not a matter of watching Aaron go through his moves and seeing the goat taken out in the wilderness and saying, okay, my sins are forgiven because bye-bye goatee but hearing, which builds faith. As the pastor speaks, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, not by his own authority, but by his authority as a called and ordained servant of Christ, of the Word. He does these things. It's not, it's not Joe or John or David who does these things, but the office of holy ministry in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ. There in that place, when you're in the gathering of the believers, the gathering of the congregation, your sins are forgiven. And if that's not enough, then he can lay both his hands on you and pronounce that same in private confession and absolution. What a gift. What a gift to have our sins forgiven. To, to be able to know that the things that you have done wrong, the things that wake you up in the middle of the night, the things that drive you nuts during the day, the things that you think would tear you apart and drive you into the depths of hell of suffering are as far from you as the East is from the West in the proclamation of your forgiveness. Why? Because Christ stood upon the cross 
hung upon the cross, bled for you. The blood and the water poured out, forming his church, washing you clean, that you might be holy. Even more than Aaron, who went through all those processes, by the blood of Christ, you have been made clean to stand before him in prayer and in hope and at peace, peace which surpasses all understanding. Amen. That's a good place to stop. Let's look to our prayer of the day. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue today with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Wednesday morning, Holy Father, thank you for your gracious and precious gift of family. I rejoice in the laughter and tears, the knowledge and learning, and sorrow and joy, happiness and peace, forgiveness and love that fill my home. Teach me to treasure my time with each person you have given me. Cause me to appreciate how fearfully, wonderfully, intricately, and uniquely you have made each of them. Help me not to take them for granted, but to cherish them. Bless all marriages. Give husbands and wives the gifts of clear communication, faithfulness, integrity, honor, and forgiveness. With each passing day, allow them to keep their marriage vows and continually grow in love for you and for each other. In times of sorrow and joy, help them to give support and encouragement to each other so that they may enjoy true, rewarding, and lasting companionship. If you have given them the precious gift of children, grant these parents your patience strength and wisdom to raise their children to know fear and love you may all marriages reflect the relationship of christ has with us his bride the church grant me your grace and favor let me extend the same charity mercy forgiveness and love to my family and friends that you have given to me in jesus christ my dear savior show me how to live in peace and unity with them so we may give glory to you this in jesus name Amen. Um, we haven't had other prayers in a while. Uh, so let me just see here. Lord God, I come to you seeking peace of mind. I am distressed and troubled, irritated and worried, my sinful and rebellious heart. I am dissatisfied with myself and the world around me. My day is filled with envy. My feelings are so easily hurt. I know, O oh Lord, that I am at fault. I have not opened my heart to you, nor have I given service and consideration to those whom I live, with whom I live in this home, and to those with whom I must work throughout the day. Everything annoys me. Those with whom I work get on my nerves. O oh God, I admit that it is myself, my sins, my lovelessness that has created these situations. Therefore, I come to you asking for grace to conquer myself. 
Restore to me the desire to walk in your presence and let me live in the sunshine of your love. Forgive me all my sins and fill my soul with peace. Go with me, Lord, through the day. Put my mind at ease and speak peace to my soul through the reconciliation that is found in the cross of Jesus, my Savior. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, especially those who have asked for our prayers. We pray this day for Larry and Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Brianne, Ashley, Susie, Don, Bob, Megan, and all who have asked for our prayers and who raise your holy name in their lips that you might hear them and that you would answer their prayers with comfort, assurance, and with healing where it is your good and gracious will. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our morning devotions to an end here. A little, well, we're not too long. I pray God's blessings upon you on this Wednesday. If uh, you are in the area of storms, may you be kept safe. Um, God's blessings be upon you, and we will see you here. Ooh, tomorrow I've got Grace Lodge. Well, I'll either record or we'll be short and live tomorrow morning. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you tomorrow.